and waiting for my co-host to drop in. I see him coming in right now. Let's bring in Marvin Bracey. Come on in, Marvin. So, everybody, this is the show is called What Were You Thinking? And here he is. What's up, Bob? How you doing, man? What's going on, Marvin? Just wait, welcoming everyone to the show. You know, I got to tell you, man, this is now day, let me look here, day 26. We started this during the Winter Olympics, 17 straight days. And it went so well. We're like, let's just keep this thing rolling. So now we're doing every Monday and, and Thursday. And you were on Thursday, and I thought you were a blast. So I'm like, hey, you should just start co-hosting a little bit with us. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. So so what have you been up to today? What was today? What was going on today in your world? Um, we started off with a nice easy practice. Um, I think we did some uh, summer celebrations today. So um, you know, just uh just keeping the wheels greased, that's it. All right, all right. So I wanna there are so many things that you brought up on Thursday show. I did want to take a few minutes before we bring in we got Kendall Williams coming in to join us today. But um so first of all though, give everyone a lowdown because I don't think I had the sequencing right of you went to college, right? Florida State. Right, Florida State, okay. yes, sir. So give me the rundown again. You went to college, and what did you do there? What sports did you play there? I went, I went to college for uh, – I signed for football, but I ended up uh, – and I track got me for free because I was on the full football scholarship. Um, signed for football. I ended up red shirt in my freshman year. And then uh, um, I got on the track. I think I ran about three, four races um, indoors, and then – I ran, I think my first and only outdoor meet of collegiate season was Florida Relays. Mm. And I got hurt at the Florida Relays. And I, I ended up leaving college like completely. I was like, yeah, I'm just, I'm out of here. So then I turned professional and I moved kind of back home to Claremont. You know, I was born and raised in Orlando, but I moved back home to Claremont to run track professionally. And I did that for three, three and a half years. Right. And then I decided that I wanted to go play football again. So, you know, revamp training and stuff and, you know, um, had to go at it, but it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. And then I came back to track. So when you, so you're a Florida, Florida kid growing up, like, was it always mm -hmm. just going to be Florida state or was it, you know, a few other colleges in the mix? No, nah, coming out actually uh fun fact, I almost sound, uh, almost uh, re recommitted to uh, Texas A&M. I liked really? everything they had going on. Yeah, I had like everything they go they had going on there. I was a big fan of uh, Vince Anderson, and um, at the time, Mike Sherman was the football coach. He was the head football coach, and he ended up getting fired. Like wow. as I was getting ready to like make that move, and so I was wow. like, "Well, I'm, you know, I'm just going with my gut feeling." And it was Florida State, but coming out it was Florida State, Florida, Texas A and M, and I thought about going to LSU for a little bit. But I wasn't – it was going to be for me, man. It was going to be somewhere in the ACC, SEC, close to 12. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and you were always two sport, right? I mean, you you were – from the beginning, you are thinking football and track. Oh, yeah. I was. I told everybody that was recruiting me that, you know, for me to come to university, I'm doing both. And then what did you love uh, – I'm kind of curious about what you love about track, what took you to football – and why why do you kind of make a go at football? Obviously, you love both sports, but I'm really curious to hear, like, what was it? What was that like? And what was kind of driving you to do both of those things? So, um, coming out of high school, track is kind of where I made my name first. You know, um, I was on I think my sophomore year of high school, I was on a JV football team, and I didn't get moved up at the end of the year. Like I really? was a starting, I was a, I was a start, yeah, I was a starting running back, and I didn't get moved up. But like you know, as I've learned like over the years the way, you know, the coach, the way the system was in high school, like we was, a, we ran an I formation in like 2012. So, I mean, he needed like a big, you know, a yeah. big bruiser. And that wasn't me. I was like five, seven, five, eight, 150 pounds soaking wet. So, um, actually fun fact, after my, in 2010, I ran, I think I won a state championship in 100 with like 10-19. I was, it was like a 2.5 win, 2.6 win. 
But like four days later was the spring football game. And obviously now, you know, being that I was running that fast, they put me on the on the it's a spring team and I think I ended up scoring like three times. Wow. And so that's when, you know, college was like, Oh, you play football too. So then, you know, coming into that next season, I was on varsity for my junior and senior season, in which I had two really good seasons. So it was like, Okay, when I get to college, I'm gonna do both. I gotta I gotta give myself an opportunity at both from running 10-1, 10-2 as a high school kid, or 10 as a high school kid, and I'm on the field with, like, I was in an Under Armour All-American game. Oh, and wow. And so, for me, I was like, you know what, like, this, I, I, I'm just going to keep it going as long as I can, but when I got to college, like, I started to see that it was two completely different seasons. Like, that was going to be a lot. Right, right. So then, you get to college, so then you, you said, I'm going, was it kind of like, I'm going track, and if I'm going track, I'm going pro. Is that kind of the decision making, or how did that how did that work for you? So I mean, I had to, I had the opportunity to go pro straight out of high school, hmm. and um, I thought about it. You know, I thought about it heavy, but um, I wanted to give myself the opportunity to go to college, you know, play football, at least get the experience. You just like you know, see what I really want to do. And um, I mean, I got there and I enjoyed my time, but I mean, after injury, I had a couple injuries, and I was like, you know what, man, like I ain't. I ain't signed up for this, so I just I took the I took the pro route. So then, so then you came back. So you went to track, turned pro in track. But then, so what happened? Because you went back to football. Yeah. So I think my contract was up like the end of 2016, and I mean, I wanted I wanted a little bit. I wanted more money. You know, I wanted you know more security. Yeah. And I wasn't asking for like, you know, the Brinks truck. I was just asking for more than what I was. You know, what I was. Yeah getting and um at the time like we just never really came to terms and i was like you know i felt like i gotta do what's best for me and i had still had the itch to play anyway because i mean i never really got out of my system i red shirt in college i never played so mm. i was like you know if there's gonna be a time i'm 22 like now is the time to go try it out and i mean i got with i got with a couple teams and you know i would end up getting cut and i was like all right man like if no more opportunities come then it's back to track for me Right. And the opportunity, opportunities kind of stopped coming. And then actually funny because one of the dudes from the uh, the USFL, they just kind of started. Yeah. One of the dudes that reached out to me and was asking me if I was still interested to play, but obviously I'm not, you know, I'm trying to play no more. That's so interesting. Yeah. We, we, uh, we know some folks over there at Fox. I mean, I, I didn't really understand. I learned recently, actually, Fox owns a league. So it's actually going to be a whole new kind of experience, you know, unlike before because – super unstable because because of the funding but since fox actually exactly. owns the league it's just you know going to be more of a stable situation so then though so i it, i just find this fascinating though marvin because so you go to school you do both right you then go i'm turning pro and track then you go i'm giving this nfl thing so automatically i think this is a guy that's really ambitious this is a guy that knows how to when he points his uh energy and effort and focus into something he believes that he can do these things 100 so percent. so then how how did you then go so what year was it then where you said i'm done with football and now i'm going back to track 2019 i was doing the aaf and um i had broke i broke my literally i broke my arm the very first game of the season like i dropped there was a punt coming in it, I dropped it and went through and it rolled forward. So when I went to get it, like somebody ran into my arm and I didn't know it was broken until like I got to the sideline. They took me in the tent and I thought it was like a stinger or something. And he was like, he was touching it. He was like, oh, shit, your arm broken. Oh, man. And I was like, oh, all right. All right. That's that's different. Yeah. Like I wanted to bring no bones during track. But like I was out for about what, five or six weeks. So I came back week seven. And as I came back, the league folded because of funding. Right. That's right. That's right. But in the meantime, though, if we go backwards in time, you made the Olympic team. In 2016. Yeah. So you just skipped over all that part. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I was saying you were asking me what, what, you know, what made me decide to come back to track. I know. It's crazy, though. So your career. So, okay. So, so 2017. So 2017, I spent time with the Indianapolis Colts. And I was like, I said, I ended up getting cut. So I was like, all right, I, I kind of know what camp is like. I kind of know what they're looking for. Like I know what to bring to the next, you know, next time. So the next season, 2018, I was, uh, I got a chance with the Seahawks. Ended up getting cut. And I'm like, okay, but at least I, I feel myself getting better. Like I know that with the right. next opportunity, you know, I'm going to, you know, assert myself and 
I think that'll be exactly what I need. So 2019, I ended up doing the AAF. And like I said, when I broke my arm, I was like, yeah, this is just not, it's yeah. not, it, I don't know. So when I came back to, after like week six, week seven, I came back to the team, you know, I'm healthy, I'm ready to play. And so you're still ready to go and then the league. Yeah. Forward. So Lee forwards, and I'm like, all right. So then it was like I said, now, nah, so I had like that summer to kind of sit and think. And I was like, what do I really want to do? You know, I'm like, I'm really sick of like, you know, the, the football stuff and how it's going. And I don't know if I got another, you know, another disappointment in me. And so um, I, I ended up reaching out to my old coach, uh, Lance Barman. Shout out to Coach Barman. Uh, I reached out to him and I was like, hey, man, I want to I, I wanna come back, you know. And he just let me come back to the, he let me come back and work out with him. And so in, now in this, I'm not, that's in 2019. That was the end of 2019. So after the Doha World Championships, I joined the group that, that next November. And at so that November point, you're, you're 25 or something like, like that, right? 24, 25. I think, yeah, I think I was 25. I think I was 25 going on 26. Yeah. 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 So, dude, mm-hmm. you've already had like three careers <laughs> at this point in your life. <laughs> This is crazy. Yeah, yeah, man. So, and then I had to, I mean, you know, I, I'm now with Nike, so I'm not even with Brahman no more. I'm actually with uh, Rainer Ryder. Right, that's right. So I was unsigned with Brahman in 2000, from, 19, from 2019, from about November of 2019 to February of 2020. I ran at USA's, I ran indoor USA championships, and I got second behind Christian, and I think I ran like 649. And at the time, my personal best was 648. So that's how I ended up, you know, signed with Nike, and then I had to right. find a new coach, which ended up being Rainer. So, so I know, and I know Kendall Williams. We're going to bring you on in one second, Kendall. But before we get there, because I, there, there's, I feel like of all the male sprinters right now, for some reason, I feel like you're the sleeper. You're the one everyone's kind of, kind of sleeping on, but you're right there. You're right there. Like, to me, it's like you're right in the thick of the whole conversation, but I don't hear your name being called quite as much as everybody else. Are you seeing us the same way I am? Yeah, I mean, you Yeah, you mean, you, have to, you see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? You hear the chatter and all that stuff like that. But at the end of the day, man, all I can do is control what I can control. I can, you know, run fast. And, you know, when you start winning and you start getting your medals and, you know, that's how you get talked about. And, you know, being out, luckily for me, I've been in the sport since I was 19. So yeah. I've seen, you know, how to kind of go about, you know, being one of the talked about or, or something like that. But all I can do is from this from right now, control what I control. That's running fast and, you know, getting some music, getting opportunities and just seizing it. Yeah. The, um, all right. So we could keep going and we're going to keep going, but we're going to bring someone else into the show. Okay. And, and I'm going to kind of, you know, turn turn over the steering wheel to you a little bit with Kendall and I know you guys haven't you guys haven't really you've met but you don't know each other um so actually I think this could be a really fun and interesting conversation um and talk about a multi-sport athlete right this is you know the the epitome of it right with a a heptathlete and a pentathlete so let's let's bring in Kendall here see what's going on I know she has a lot of interesting things rolling on there she is Kendall, what's up? Hey guys. What is going on, Kendall? Oh, nothing. Y'all see Nova in the back? <laughs> oh my God. Wait till everyone starts to see the Nova videos. Oh you know. my God. I know. <laughs> so, how, how, do, how do Marvin, do you have a dog, by the way? I got a uh, pit bull. Yes, I do. I, I want to know how, how you guys traveling and doing everything that you do and with all your schedules. How do you guys have pets? How does that work? <laughs> Uh, kennels and my parents. Luckily, I'm right now while I'm in Athens, I'm only an hour and a half from my parents. So um, sometimes I'll just swing her by there before I'm, I go to the airport. Um, but my parents travel a lot also. So if they're out of town as well, then she's in the kennel. I got my um, I got my little brother here with me. So he he pretty much uh, man the fort whenever you know I'm not around. So it's as convenient as can be. Nice. I'm, I'm gonna Marvin. I'm gonna give you guys both one quiz, and then, and then I want I want you to kind of drive the bus here. So, do you guys know how many who 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 took down in the placing table 
in the world indoors. And I know you guys had two of the medals. But who took down, um, I guess, the, the, the total number of placements, the highest number? I assume you guys know this. Which country? Um, was it Spain? I have no, no Ethiopia. All right. Other it's than the guess. U.S. Or, okay. Other than the U.S., yes. Ethiopia was number two. So out of, out of all non-U.S. countries, yeah. That, that surprised me, actually. Yeah, I can say the same. I can say the same. I don't know. I feel like they're always really good with distance. And I feel like that's how they kind of sneak up the medal count is just covering a lot of yeah. distance. And they have they stack a lot of people in those distance races. Yeah, big time, big time. Yeah. It's actually a really good oh, That's very interesting. Yeah, has that ever happened before? I don't know. I was just looking at it Especially up. on the indoor level. Especially on the indoor level. Like, I mean, it's only so many races. Yeah, I you wouldn't know, think like there's it. that many, but it must be that, Kendall. It must be like they're, they're, they're stacking so many in there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Marvin, what's the first question that you got? Because I got like a million for Kendall, but what's your first question? Um, so, because I've, I don't think I've ever actually, actually ever had like a full, like real conversation with you. Uh, I'll start off by asking you, where are you originally from? Uh, well, I was born in Virginia, but I moved to Kennesaw, Georgia when I was one. So, okay, so you're from, um, okay. I would say Georgia. So, you went to, I'm assuming you went to high school in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, okay, and then the University of Georgia. All right. Okay. So you're right <laughs> at home. All right. Well, you're you're, you're training. You're training. You're training here, right? As in, uh, that's uh, it's a little bit all over the place. So I'm finishing okay. up a master's here at Georgia, and then my training group though is in Jacksonville. So as soon okay, as I yeah, finish I'll say, this, yeah. I'll be there full time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. Well. That's what's up. That's now, awesome. what do you have for? Hmm. What do you have for what now he said he had a question for you? No. Well, I I mean I'm gonna I was gonna save this, but I don't think I can. Because I was going back to the points and I just remember uh Devin's reaction to you placing uh with that bronze medal. Yes. So you you have to know, right? In the last event, you know what you need to run relative to the person who's closest to you. Right. Yeah. So I knew that I had 10 seconds um but i also knew that she was a very talented 800 runner and she was probably going to go actually i didn't know what she was going to do she could either sit behind me and then just try to outkick me or she could just take it from the gun and start sprinting so i wasn't sure going in what she was going to do um so i really just tried to focus on my own race and sorry no nope. <laughs> um and so when she took off i just tried not to panic and just tried to stay within the 10 second gap. So it was very, very close, probably the closest margin um, I've ever had like the whole place time. Oh, quick question. So it's not, it's not by, it's not by place, it's by time? Uh, yeah, cause time equals oh, certain wow. points. Yeah. Okay, I learned, I learned something new. All right, mm -hmm. that makes sense. I'm Everything over here thinking, it's like, yeah. All so right. Marvin, isn't that crazy though? She does all these events. She comes down to the last event. And, and at the point, it's... like I really thought, I'm sitting here thinking that y'all gotta run. Like I didn't know y'all had to run a certain time. Like I thought, like okay, if you get first and I get eighth, like obviously you get more points than me. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that is true. But sometimes if you've done enough in the other events, you kind of have a little bit of a cushion. So I had a great long jump, which gave me, uh, I think, like 130 ah, okay. something points ahead of her going into the 800. So that gotcha. was where that 10 seconds came from. Okay. Okay. Now I learned something every day. I never, I've never really taken the time to talk to somebody that's a motorized to really like break it down. We just see y'all compete and think. I used to always think it was just okay. Well, they get first or they get, you know, because right. they always talk about when you watch like the TV version, they always talk about like whose strength is what event and you know mm -hmm. what what you can't connect. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty much why they talk about that is because it's like okay, okay. well. You know, for me, they would probably say the 800 is not my strongest, but the 800 is one of her strongest. So this could be, Kendall could lose a medal because, you know, if she beats me by 10 seconds, that she jumps ahead of me um, in the standing. So that's why they kind of explain to everybody what the strengths are because they can kind of let you know who might pull ahead of who in what event. I know. I'm not gonna lie. I got my. I might. I might be pissed if I lose based off just the last event. Like, there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Like, I. Nah. There's no way. I'm gonna do seven events and then at the end, nah. 
<laughs> I know. Nah. That's kind of what, that's what nah. I was thinking too. I was like, there's no way. No, nah, no, there's no um, way. Not gonna last for that. But it happens. It happens. So but that I mean there was a lot of drama in it, but the, the funny thing is just because how I don't know, they're whatever on the coverage. We could go on and on about the coverage. At least we saw it. So mm-hmm. so um but there's not like you don't you know, there's no little line that says, okay, here's where this athlete is and here's where Kendall is. Here's the line that's just to be – like they do it in some of the big – Right. Like the big, what they think are the big events. But yeah. we didn't really know. So they're like kind of announcing it, but we didn't really know exactly what the difference was because it was coming down to like fractions of seconds. Yeah, it was. And then it looked crazy, on, especially on a 200-meter track. So like 10 seconds mm-hmm. on a 200 track, like – I'm Listen, sure it I looked really pitiful. <laughs> well, I'm like, what's 10 seconds? Like, I couldn't understand the difference. Like, like, where right. should we be looking? What are we rooting for? I'm just, we're just screaming. Go, oh, okay. Yeah. I think a line. That's a good idea. A line, I think, would have been helpful for people viewing it. Yeah. You know how where actually, you know, 10 seconds is because yeah. people looking at that race, um, they might have thought I was 20 yeah, seconds I, back. Who knows? I really thought. So. I really thought. So. I didn't. Well, I was in the. Uh, I was in the arena when y'all when you finished. The race. So I didn't know like what was going on, but I did see you get the medal, and I'm like, okay, well, I guess because I know they was talking about the girl in front of you, but right. I didn't know that you was. I didn't know that you were ten seconds behind or whatever, whatever, whatever mm-hmm. the situation may have been. I just seen you come around and get the flag, and I'm like, okay, well, how the hell she got it? She got Somehow. it. Somehow. Like, really <laughs> now I, I do want to ask though, like, how do y'all practice? Like, because I just really, really thought about like I never really see like people that do the motives at track meets. And I didn't think about that. I don't really see you in like a USA's or like a world championships or right. something like that. So like where, how do y'all practice y'all events like throughout the season? Do you do like certain meet certain events or do they have track meets just for y'all? Yeah. So a little bit of both um, at training, we'll probably train like three or four different things in a practice. Um, and then in the competition, we'll do just some low key meets and we might practice like one or two events. So, um, I'm doing a meet in Miami in a couple weeks and I'll just do one or two events. Um, and then there is a meet that is specifically for multis that I do every year in Austria. It's called Gotsis. Um, and so that is specifically just heptathlon and decathlon and everybody comes out and fans are drinking beer and it's, it's so much fun. So there okay. are some events that are specific to what we do, but if we're not doing all seven or all 10 events, then we'll just do like one or two. Yeah. Okay. See, from the outside looking in, like track and field um, seems like mayhem to begin with, right? It's just like all these things are going on, like at all, seemingly at all times, you know? Mm-hmm. But then for you guys, it's like, oh, so for this group, we're going to make it crazier. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but, pretty much. But I, I do want to. So, so Marvin, we did, we did a shoot with Kendall and Devin and it happened actually to be on her dad's birthday and it was super late and your dad and mom were just so nice to let us come and shoot at your house. And, and, um, but I remember a story though, that, that your mom and dad were telling it was basically like, so, so Marvin, imagine this, right here, here are these two kids that are pretty close in age. So they're going to the same track meets and they're just showing up and, essentially entering everything that's there they're just walking home with all the hardware <laughs> as kids it was like oh god here come the here come the williams kids right <laughs> that's pretty much it we come to a meet and do hurdles long jump high jump maybe a relay 400 hurdles like just the whole oh, in nah. on. like we would just do so many things um aau track days like i would i think i would do the pentathlon plus like four or five other open events after that how many um of course how long have you running track um i started running when i was seven so and i'm 26 now turning 27 so yeah almost 20 years you said seven seven (sighs) (laughs) believe it or not i didn't see my first track until my sophomore year of high school what wow yeah so like so get this right um my sophomore year of high school I was hanging like some of the dudes I was hanging out with was freshmen, and um, like I said, I had played JV football. So when you're on JV, you're on a team with like the freshmen that are really you know mm-hmm. that are okay, like too good to be a freshman on a freshman team, but too not good enough to be on a varsity team. So they just kind of like you know, and so I'm on uh, I'm on I'm playing JV, and um, there was like at the end of the season, it was like, oh man, we're gonna all go out for track. 
like when we come back to school for the spring semester. I'm like, all right, whatever, like I'll, I'll do it. And I ended up running my first hundred. I ran like 1082, and then I went for like 1082, 1076, 1058, 1042, and at the state championship, I won it with like 1019. So it was all happening like so fast. There were so many moving parts. Like I didn't understand what had just happened. Mm-hmm. So to me, like I was just racing to win. Like I didn't care about the time. I didn't know about like headwinds. I didn't know about tailwinds or like none of that. And then at the end of 2016, that was like June of 2016, June of 2010, I went to my first uh, USA Junior Championships, which was in Des Moines. Mm-hmm. And I ended, up getting, I ended up getting sixth, but I was I was 16 at the time. And I, I did 19U when I could have did 17U, but it's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> I did 19 U and I was racing like, I was racing like high school. I was racing like college freshman and I was in a, I was a sophomore. So I ended up making a team, but I got like six and I was in, a, in the relay pool and we went mm-hmm. to like Moncton, Canada or something like that. And I think on that team with me was like Ajay Wilson, um, Omar Craddock, mm-hmm. um, Mike Berry was on that team with us. Like we had like a lot of people that was, you know, that are still. And then I think my first senior team was 2000. 14 indoors. Yeah, that was definitely my first team. That's crazy. So, so Kendall, do you, I'm, I'm curious to see, like, as your guys' seasons are kind of getting, kind of getting into it here though, but I'm curious to see, do you have any questions for Marvin and kind of what's going on in the, in the men's sprint world? Um, and mm-hmm. to get some kind of some, some inside scoops. I always love, so what we're trying to do in this show always is to, laugh a little bit, have some fun along the way, obviously, but also um, to learn, right? Mm-hmm. So it's mostly we want to learn about who you guys are, what you're all about, what makes you tick. But I always find it interesting to see you guys asking questions of each other, you know? Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that I'm, I'm most impressed with by watching men's sprinters is the block start and like the the first couple steps of acceleration um and for me i struggle with reaction time coming out the block like pushing out the blocks everything and that's something that i mean even before belgrade we were changing up my blocks and you know trying different things to like um you know coaches like saying anticipate the gun do something something. because i'm the last one out of the blocks every time and then you know so i think i just any questions that i would have i guess would just be what are you thinking about when you're in the blocks? How, like, it's it's probably, you could probably write a book on it, but if you had to pick, like, a couple key things to improve a block start, what would they be? So for, for especially for the short sprints, especially the people that run, that run, uh, that run indoors, mm-hmm. it's a lot, it's a whole lot of explosion, but it's things that we do, like, in practice, like with jump series and you know certain the way our weights are set up and like stuff like that, like everything is predicated around us exploding out of the blocks. So like once once you've kind of honed in on that, it makes everything else easier because from that point it's just hitting certain positions. So mm-hmm. we know, you know, when you strike in the ground or come out the ground or coming out of the blocks, like when we're hitting a certain position, you know when you're in position and you can kind of tell coach like, hey, listen, I know that's a good way. Like you don't even gotta say nothing. And so for us, it's a, it's a bunch of small little nuances. Like, it's not a bunch of big things, believe it or not. It's a bunch of small little things that can affect, you know, 0.02 seconds or 0.03 seconds or 0.03 you need to lose a race or win a race. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's very, very, very detail-oriented. Like, yeah, it's it, it's a skill, but it also can be taught. Like, coaches can, like, tweak certain stuff, like you said, changing block settings and stuff like that that kind of give you, like, the competitive edge the next time you get in a race or a practice or whatever the situation may be. Don't give away the secrets, Marvin, but I want to know one or two of those. I want to know one or two of those little things. Just give us one. It can even be one that's like not a real one, but I'll take it. Can be, well, it's, it's, just, uh, it's as simple as like your foot striking the ground and not collapsing. Like if mm. you can, you know, a lot. Pretty much every starter that start, works on that, you know, not collapsing when you hit the ground because I mean, if you got a nice stiff angle, at the end of this, all the game of angles. That's what it is about. It's broken down to a quote-unquote science. 
So a lot of people are by the book, but you know, some people kind of deviate a little bit and that works for certain kids and or certain athletes and certain coaches. So Marvin, when you're talking about it's a game of angles, is it kind of like so D2 in the in the conversation the other day was talking about how it's not about moving your feet quicker, it's about how much force you're putting into the ground. Is this what you're talking about then? It's then kind of where your body is a lot. I mean, what do you mean when you say it's a, it's a it's a game of angles kind of? Okay, so like you know how in baseball you hit a certain part of the bat, you know where a certain part you hit that ball with a certain part of the bat, the sweet spot, you know it's out of there, right? It's kind of like that. Like there's a sweet spot, there's a, a angle somewhere, you know, from the hips down to the knees, down to the shins, down to the ankles, like whatever the situation is. There's an angle that you can hit, and as a runner, as you're running while you're hitting it, it makes everything feel so much easier. Like, you feel like you're not working because you are applying the force to get up off the ground, and you just know, like, I'm moving at a much faster rate than I'm used to. So that's why I say, like, it's an angle. It's certain angles that you got to hit. Everybody's angles may be different. You know, there's different body styles, different heights, different just running styles. So, like I said, when you're hitting those angles and moving down the track, it just makes – like, you, you, you take a couple of steps and be like, damn, how did I get 10 meters already? Because you were just so efficient with the power you're putting in the track. That's some cool insight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was yeah, listening for more. Just, Kendall, you and I were just sitting there. Going, I know. Okay. We're, we're having this like – Yeah, there's just – no, I mean, it's – Write this down. Yeah. <laughs> And that's something that I've, you know, I've learned over time. Like I've had the pleasure of being around a bunch of good coaches in track and field, and you just kind of like pick off, you know, what they what they teach you. And like as an athlete, obviously, we're the ones out there applying it, so it's going through our head on an own basis. And then for you guys, though, is it is it everything is so done in practice, done in practice, and repetitions and all that? Is it really by the time you get to the track, it's now? shutting off my head or is there one or two little cues for you that you're like really um using to kind of dial you in can i let you go first um some stuff i feel like is muscle memory um i think for some events i do get really in my head i think shot put being one of them i try to get too wrapped up in the technique and then i think sometimes that just makes it go even worse so i think i do a lot better when my head is more clear and I'm just letting my body just do what it, what it knows how to do. So I'm not necessarily when I'm hurtling, I I'm not thinking too much about my technique when I'm high jumping, same thing when I'm long jumping, same thing. I might have like one, one or two cues, but it's not overdoing it. I would say. Um, as for me, once I get to the meet, the work is done, you know, like everything I've done Monday through Friday was to prepare me for just going out there and executing the race. Um, I uh, When I, I think it was like 2014, I was training with somebody and um, I actually told a story last time I was on here. And um, she was running really good at the time, really great. And I just, I, I would ask her like, you know, why why is it, why, you, why is it so graceful? Why, why are you running like in a meet, like it's practice? Like, why is it becoming that easy to you? And she was just telling me that, like the race is the easy part. You know, and what she kind of meant by that was like, you know, the repeat reps in practice is hot as all outdoors. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the rest might be cut short. Like that's the hard stuff. Like you actually have to do it over and over and over again when you can come in a race and do it one time. And like you said, if you work for it and you trust in what you worked on, then you kind of start to, you know, develop some confidence and that's how you go and execute. So for me, when I get to a race, it's like, I mean, I've done everything I need to do to get to this point. Like it's run literally before when the gun goes off i'm just like go we'll fix the rest later like we'll break the film down and say okay well marvin at this point you didn't do this so then now i go back to practice and whatever he told me okay hey from 30 to 60 you need to do this okay in practice i'm doing that from 30 to 60 so now by the time i get to the next race run okay well from 60 to 90 this is what we need to work on and that's just kind of how you get through the season Kendall, or at least you for us do you train Kendall with other uh, heptathletes? I do. So I train with Katerina Johnson Thompson. She is yeah, a Great yeah. British or Great Britain athlete. Um, so yeah, so she now trains in Jacksonville with us, um, and then also a group of guys. So my brother uh, Garrett Scantling, um, and then Omar McLeod. And your brother. Our group. 
Mm-hmm. I didn't know it was your brother. Mm-hmm. Oh, small world. Look at that. Yep. There we go. So, there we go. You're learning something, Marvin. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. I learn something every day. I did not know that. I was just going to yeah. say, I didn't know Omar was with you now. Yeah, just join. Um, so KJT and Omar are pretty new to the group. All right. That's that's super cool. The um, so the question I have around that though is, and I don't know, maybe I just imagine it's more intense. But it's, I mean, you get it's more like you guys in in the in the heptathlon. It's like gladiators. It's mm-hmm. round after round after. This is like. These are like gladiator, gladiators over a length of time. But for you sp- sprinters, especially when you're focused on the 100, right, and in 60 in, in your indoor, but in the 100, I still don't get it, and, I, and, and I'm going to throw it out there. I still don't get you guys training together because it just it, it seems so crazy intense. But is it not that? Is it just iron sharpens iron, and that's all there is to it? Um, are you guys good buddies? How does that work? Um, I mean, when you spend, when you spend a lot of time, when you spend every day with a guy, at least six days a week, you start to develop a certain level of liking for him and you become, you know, friends and friend or friendly and friends and bros and stuff like that. Um, obviously I've been knowing Trayvon since he was in high school. He's from Florida. So he's from St. Pete. So he's right down the street. So I've been knowing him since high school. You know, I kind of, I've kind of known of the grass coming here um i've known adam really for a while so like you you develop relationships over time you know you might see people at me and then i now all been in the same group yeah it is like a it is an iron sharp iron. i mean it kind of it kind of gives you like insight about yourself in the sense that like when you train with somebody and y'all doing certain workouts and you comparing stuff like you low-key always comparing like okay like maybe something that worked for him may not work for me but like we all do basically the same workout so you still kind of get like a gauge of where you might be as a sprinter you know and so it's kind of cool to be able to train with somebody that's moving as fast or faster than you that way you always have a measuring tool of you know what to do and what not to do and just where you are in training so it kind of gives you an advantage going to race other people that are you know really fast like that so when you get in the race it's like man i already seen somebody run out of seven so it's not a culture shock but if you're training by yourself and you're light years ahead of everybody. Maybe, you know, racing people, when you get in races, it's a little different because you're not used to feeling people next to you. Kendall, do you feel the same way like that or or different than how, how I characterized it? Um, yeah, I would say for multis, we're all pretty friendly. I think whether we're training partners or not, I think we're one of the friendlier events just because even with our competitors that we don't train with, we're – giving advice, sharing things, talking to each other, laughing, just because our competition is, is so long and it's so hard that we just all just support each other. And especially since it's less about competing against the other people and more about just you beating your own score and trying to set the best score for yourself. I think that's what is so interesting about the multi. So at practice, um, me and Kat, or even when I'm training with the guys, it's just a good environment of people just pushing each other. And I think what's also interesting is that some people have stronger events than other people. So um, Kat may have a strength that in an area where I'm weaker and and vice versa. So um, like if it's the hurdles, for example, maybe I'm pushing her, but if it's the longer running, she's pushing me. Um, So I think it it just works out well. Now, I was was, funny that we had this conversation because I was just having this conversation with I think some sprinters and like some 400 runners or something like that. Um, we were just kind of talking about how in the sprints, like it's nothing personal unless you personally don't like somebody. It's nothing really personal, but like we don't really give tips and we <laughs> like just at a meet, we're not like, you just see like the pole vultures, like, oh, like, you know, they, they go so hard for each other. Yeah. And like us, it's like, it's so like the opposite. Like we're all like stone cold, like towards <laughs> each other, at least like, in the competition arena. It's like when we're right. in or around the track, it's kind of like, you know, here after the race, you can shake hands and kumbaya, whatever you do, but just leading up to it, like there's no, like, and I was telling somebody about the call room, like there's not a lot of talking. Once, like, yeah. once the warm up starts, like you, we really don't talk to each other for a solid hour and a half. Like it's like <laughs> such Game a disconnect. Face. 
yeah, yeah. It's such a disconnect until like I said until the event is over like you don't we don't unless you train with the guy like it's different like, like I said I gotta I, don't, I root for him but like, I don't gotta root for him but I do because we're all you know kind of like one mm-hmm. how, do, yeah. how do you guys do it where you and this is what one thing I'm really fascinated with how do you guys peak right at that moment because it really it comes down to you know a gun right or it comes down to a final jump or somebody just jump this and you need to jump that like how do you harness that in the moment that you know you need to do it in how how does that work for each of you uh can you want to say first sure um so my coach will kind of taper us leading up to the meet like a big competition a week before so we'll be shutting it down and having pretty much easy workouts the whole week leading up to um, the heptathlon. And so we'll train, you know, super hard, super hard, super hard, and then just relax. Um, I, I say relax, but we'll still touch up on the events. It'll just be way lighter than our normal training week. So that way we're feeling fresh for the competition. But as far as like, you know, somebody jumps a big jump and I'm having to I don't know, either beat them or jump better to make up some points. I think I just, for me, I try to focus on the work that I've already put in, kind of like what Marvin was talking about, the work that we've done in practice leading up to this moment. Like, I know that I'm prepared to have a good race or put a big jump out there or clear the bar. So I think I just kind of focus on my training and just trust that I can do anything in that moment. Um, as far as sprint, it all starts with like the program, you know, whatever coach you're with, you know, we all, well, for us, we, in the beginning of the season, talk about like the goals we have and kind of like, you know, what we want to accomplish that season. And I told him that I wanted to, you know, have a full indoor season. So, which actually ends up turning out to be, I only had two meets indoors, USA's and Worlds, but I had a full indoor schedule. So he trained me to be ready to run, you know, run good indoors and set it up like that whereas Trayvon knew he was only running one indoor race or two indoor races and then he was shutting it down for indoors so his training has been a little bit you know a little bit different and so I mean it, it all starts with the coach and the program to kind of like build you up right when you need to like you said peak so you need to run fast but like as far as the physical act goes it's just about like I said trusting in your training and everything that got you to that point like do exactly what the hell got you here then you won't have a problem. That's at least what I tell myself. So, so it can't be no worse than, don't do no worse than what got me here. Right. I mean, so once by the time you get in the blocks or, you know, you, you're getting ready for that, you know, that jump or whatever it might be, by the time that moment comes, it's just trust. You're just trusting in yourself, in your own talent, in the work that's, that you put in. That's, that's all you got. That's all you got. That's all you got. That's all you got. But that's when, but that's when, like, that's when, like, you know, those extra reps and, you know, so you just being detail oriented in practice or in warm up. Like, I, I, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of an extremist. Like, I have to do everything the same, almost down to the movie I watch before I get ready to go race. Like, almost. Sometimes I got, I got, I got a couple, two or three, that I'll kind of, you know, switch up. But like, the 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 timing of everything like, has to be like right on like for me to you know go to like a race day and competition and stuff like that like to what i wear like stuff like that fun fact i don't wear it like we have more multiple rounds i don't wear the same uniform in rounds really I, I, yeah i just i just don't do it <laughs> <laughs> well kendall if you did that that would be like how many see i can do three three is three is my max you know what i'm saying that's it so, well then the, the shoe changes too Kendall yeah, right, to exactly. Change. Change the full wardrobe. <laughs> so, so like, Kendall, uh, tell us if you have uh, any, like, um, I mean, weird quirks or superstitions that, you know, that you can tell us that, you know, that ain't too yeah, invasive. Um, I think I have a lucky breakfast, which is a bagel, um, some sort of circled cereal. So, like, Cheerios, <laughs> Fruit Loops, <laughs> something yeah. like that. Oh, so it looks like um, a metal. I get it. I get yeah, it. I circle, guess. I don't know circle cereal. Why. And then half a cup of orange juice. Yeah, okay. And so, I don't know. I just, I think in college, I noticed the pattern that whenever I had that for breakfast, I was very successful. So now, like, that's the breakfast if I want to do something great. 
So that's so question. the question. Champions. When right? you okay, so like, okay, so what is what is the most amount of PBs like you had in one particular meet? Like as far as like the heavy. Ooh, good question. Um. Hmm. I actually don't know. I would I would say two personal best. Okay. Now and then so that it's frustrating because I see some of my competitors that will go like six PBs out of seven events or sometimes even seven for seven and there's never been a multi wow. where I've put together more than two PBs. I might do like a personal best and then a couple of seasons best, but um, right. I have not done more than a couple personal bests. Um, and I think that's just because individually, like at, at, in points throughout my career, I've kind of set my personal best to like pretty high to, do, to pull out in a multi. Um, so like, for example, long jump seven meters is Pretty, challenging to do easy. on yeah, day two. Not, so <laughs> it's yeah, like we might not yeah, see yeah. seven meters um, or, or we might. Who knows? But um, so question. Uh, yeah. Do you know, do you like, OK, so as a sprinter, like, I mean, when you're very in tune with yourself, like, you know, when you're ready to like, you know, when you're ready to drop one. Like, yeah. do you know, I mean, that you train for so many different events, do you know that, okay, like, yeah, I'm probably ready to jump real good this week, or, yeah, I think vaulting going to be, it's going to be something different this week? Yeah, definitely. So, in okay. in, in Doha, in 2019, I, um, you know, they bring us, bring you out to the track to do the block starts before they take you back and do the introduction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we were on the track, you know, going over a couple hurdles, and I, for some reason, just stumbled out of the blocks. But my body felt really awake and good. And so I was like, and then I only got that one start. But I was like, okay, either this is going to be really, really fast or this is going to yeah. be a disaster. Um, but that ended up being my 1250 race. And so, okay. I, I mean, I went from a personal best of like 1282 to wow. 1258 in that race. But I knew, like, I felt it. And then even in yeah. the um, Olympic trot, or no, even in Tokyo, I – I just knew that I was going to PR in the javelin. I was like, this is the day I'm about to do it right now. <laughs> right now and yeah. I did. That's, so. See, okay, so that we don't need, I, I, we don't get that bold. We won't be like right now, but like, at least for <laughs> me, at least for me, I'm like, okay, when I'm, when I'm feeling good, like, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to run somewhere close. Because I mean, you're trying to compare it to where you were when you ran whatever your mm. PB was. You know, yeah. so, but that's, that, that's definitely interesting to hear that you knew, like, okay, I'm going to go out here and something's going to be, I'm, I'm going to do good at something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Sometimes I wake up the, the morning of a multi and I'm like, I don't know what is going to go well today, but I feel like I'm going to put something. together yeah. a really good score. Like, so I'm gonna, I, I don't know what part. How are yeah. we going to bottle that? That is, because if you're waking up in the morning and you're like, ooh, it's going to be a good day. Man. <laughs> We got to bottle that. World's greatest has got to bottle that. If we can bottle that, we're oh, all so billionaires. Actually, funny story. <laughs> so story time. Story time. I came to. Um, I wasn't supposed. I was waiting to get into the the Prefontaine Classic last year, mm -hmm. but obviously I didn't end up running. So um, I was like, okay, cool. I'm scrambling like quick. I need to find a meet that, to get into because I was feeling really good and I want the race. Um, I came to Memphis. The Memphis. Uh, the Ed Murphy Classic. So I come in, the, the, the meet is on Sunday. I come in on that Saturday afternoon and like right across, the, like I was hungry. So, and I had, I was hungry. I had a headache. So like right across the street was like this little hole in the wall, you know, place that was, you know, I guess for like the steaks. So I like the, the cheese steaks. So I, I went across the street, got one, whatever. And I actually fell asleep with it, like in my bed, like the sandwich was like half eaten <laughs> in my bed. I had a headache. Listen, I had a headache. I, it was such a bad headache. And so I didn't go to the track, like I didn't, I just fell asleep. So I turned all the lights off, finished my sandwich. My roommate come in, it was like pitch black dark. He was like, oh, and it's like nine o'clock. He comes like, it's pitch black dark. We just knock out. Wake up in the morning, go to like my little, you know, my little pre-race day ritual. And I went out and ran the fastest. I equaled my PB, but I ran 985, you know, into like a negative out there. And actually that day I stumbled out of the blocks in the prelims and I ran like 998. And I knew, like, oh, like, there's no way I can, oh, this is my day. Like, this is, like, I knew right then that, like, this is, yeah, even though I had, like, the worst lead up, like, the day mm -hmm. of the meet, like, everything, everything just went according to plan. Yeah. That's magic. Like, that just, magic. Yeah, like, like, no, no, for real, like, everything just, for me, like I said, for me, stumbling in the prelims to, like, come back in the finals, and I knew, like, okay, well, I'm ready to run this. So, 
at the very worst, if I do exactly what I did in the prelim, stumble and everything, I'm gonna run this. Yeah. Right. That's crazy. So Marvin, I, I have I have a little I want you to do a breakdown of, of this video. Let's see what we can do here. The uh, <laughs> let's let's break down this form. Okay. Hold, on, I, hold on, what am I looking at? You'll see. Are you on your computer or are you on your phone? I want a phone. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> It's Kendall's dog on the treadmill. Yeah, it's my dog running on, a, sprinting on a treadmill because oh. she is on a weight loss journey. So um, we got her a treadmill for Christmas. And the problem is she's not really motivated to get on it unless I have like ice cream or some sort of treat. So That's she'll like be running on the treadmill but eating ice cream. <laughs> That's so counterproductive. I know. You got like a sweatshirt on her here? like Yeah. Yeah, she's getting sweatshirt on, getting her little workout in. Um, she's got like a she's sweat gotta mask. lose like 15, 20 pounds, says the vet. So I, I don't know. Now my dog actually goes in. The, I take taking my dog in the morning at nine. I uh, to the vet. What kind? Really? What kind of dog is it? She's a pit bull and German Shepherd mix. Uh uh <laughs> No, no, the, the pit bull, the pit bull part is fine. I don't trust any German Shepherds, man. I don't. Oh well, I got bit. Listen, I got bit. No, no, I got bit by one of those. I'm really. Uh, mm. I was, does, yeah, does I Devin was, still I'm, has his. I'm yeah, cool. Devin still has um his dogs, and they're they're a cool mix too. They're they're really sweet. They're like a mix. They're not mm -hmm. purebred German Shepherd, right? Mm -mm. No, they're not German Shepherd at all. For some uh, reason, I thought they were. All right. Mm -mm. So Marvin, it's okay. You can you can. No, see actually, them. there's a no. They're cool. There's this dude that trains. He used to train police dogs. But oh. then, like, he went into business for himself. So anybody with German Shepherd still go to him. But he trains any kind of dog. Like, I've seen, like, um, what's those dogs? I want one so bad. What's those dogs? It's the, um, oh, man. I can't even think about it right now. The um, Big dog or little dog? It's really big dog. I can't, the name is going to be Mastiff. Like, not the Mastiff. It's like it, though. Corso. St. Bernard? Oh, okay. oh, oh, the Corso. Oh, yeah, yeah, he trains, like, Corsos. He trains Rottweilers. Like, he trains everything. But he does like obedience training and stuff like that. That's what it is. And you can do like if you buy like a different package, you can do like a um it'll be obedience training with like protective training. So like they'll be snapping a little whips and stuff and dogs be attacking the yeah. arms and like yeah, yeah people yeah, wear yeah. like a little foam. Right. I'm not trying to trust that, bro. I'm not trusting that dog to bite. No, nah, I'm straight. <laughs> I, I know you're not going to be able to see this, Marvin, but there's some other training that, that uh, Kendall shared with us that was going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. So my Marine Combat Fitness Test, um, which was very difficult. Before, I didn't send you the video, but we had to do, before all of this, an 800 in combat boots. That was the very first thing, is we had to run 800 meters in combat boots. And then from there, we had to do an ammo can press. So as many times with, I forget how much it weighed, like maybe 10 pounds or something, maybe a little more. Um, but as many times, like full lockout with the elbows. Um, and I think in like two minutes was the time. And then after that, we had to do this, like, I don't even know what to call it, but we had to like army crawl and then high crawl and then run through cones and then pick up a person and drag a person and throw a grenade and all this stuff is oh, all time and this is apparently the the real uh combat fitness test that they do and they ranked us to see if we passed and i got a perfect score on it believe it or not but it was the hardest thing i probably have ever done okay all right <laughs> this this was pretty hard too i'm just working on all your videos now kendall yeah the video, give it a loss the, here at the 800 give, i'm sorry. giving blaine some help here i know yes so <laughs> My dad and I, we just like to do like fun things when we're overseas. And so it's usually my idea to make him do something really bizarre. So in Austria, we found like a random playground in the middle of nowhere. And I had him do like a zip line. I've had him do cartwheels. Like, and then in that video was in Belgrade, we found this random horse statue. And I was like, dad, you got to get on top of the horse. 
but it was tall, so I had to like boost him up <laughs> to get on top of it. But yeah, we we had fun. So Marvin, does does your son get you doing that? He's like, all right, Dad, you got to try this. Well, I mean, right now I'm still in the uh, I'm still in the early stages. He's uh right. he's three, he'll be four in May. So cool. right now I'm still in the early stages. Like I'm still in like the yeah I'm still in the imitation phase. You know, right. he's still imitating me a lot. So I see a lot of myself all day and. I don't know how people really deal with me because it's a lot. <laughs> but it's cute because it's a kid, so it's acceptable. That's that's funny. That's funny. The um all right, so I got some other questions though. We're um we're, we're coming down to our hour, but we've been going a little bit longer and if you guys are having fun, I'm going to just keep going until you guys get bored. The um I do want to know what are your top your top favorite cities to visit um the one thing about track and field athletes is you guys get to travel the world i think there's a lot of nfl athletes and major league baseball players and all sorts of other athletes that are really envious of that so what are some of your favorite places that you've traveled and maybe foods uh that you've eaten when you're there oh um places i really like London, just because I feel like there's a lot of stuff to do. It is kind of gray there, so I would like to see London when it's sunny because I've only ever been there when it was gray. But as far as like things to do, I feel like there's a lot to do and see in London. Um, I, I I actually really enjoyed Doha. Um, we did some of the touristy things in in Doha, and that was fun. And to me, like the people that I encountered were all really nice. Um, and yeah, I think Monaco is beautiful. Yep, yeah, okay. So. Yeah, so that that was really nice. My parents and I went there. So, um, food, I'm not super adventurous with food, um, especially if I'm somewhere for a track meet. So I've really only eaten things like, yeah. that I was familiar Bo with. Boiled chicken like, in every city is what you're saying. Pretty much. <laughs> and like rice or potatoes or something. <laughs> what about you, Marvin? Uh, she took two of them, actually. Uh, London was on my list. Uh, Monaco is definitely on my list. It's probably one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Um, I actually got to, I took, I got to, uh, like, tour Venice a little bit. I flew in there to go to uh, Padua, so I got to. And then I would also. You're bouncing in and out a little bit, Marvin. Oh, sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, you're back. Okay, I, I was going to say, uh, Paris is probably my favorite. I got to, uh, I mean, up close and personal to the actual power. So that was, that was definitely nice to see. That's yeah. super cool. Paris is cool. And yeah, for you, Kendall, I mean, you guys, you guys do so many things. I don't know how you get your dad to do all this. I, I don't know either, but he's, he's fun. Both my parents are super fun. So um, I'm glad that they get to travel around everywhere with me. So pretty much everywhere I've been, they've been, I mean, they had to miss Tokyo, but um, everywhere else, they've been they've been there. Hey Marvin, normally we we kind of end it with the guests by asking them a uh, what were you thinking question. Do you have it one in mind for Kendall? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Kendall, you made a team in sixteen, correct? Yeah. You made the yeah you made the I remember you made the team. <laughs> What were you thinking? Um, well, that I need to hold on to this third place spot. So it was another situation where I couldn't let somebody beat me by at that time. It was for that race. It was, I think, seven seconds, seven and a half seconds. Um, but her personal best was maybe 10 seconds better than mine. So I was really stressed about it. And um, and actually, my brother was the one that came to me before the race because he can see that I was so stressed. And he was like, Kendall, the pain is only going to last for a couple minutes, but being an Olympian is going to last forever. So he's like, you know, basically, you can do it. Just go out and run. <laughs> and so I did. I just tried to hold on for dear life. That was pretty much my thought. Like, hold on for dear life. And then when you die, you die. So that's yeah. what I was thinking. <laughs> Marvin, I'm throwing one back to you, though. Or better yet, Kendall, what about one from Marvin? What were you thinking hmm. kind of moment? Okay, let's see. When you cross the line in Belgrade in the final, after running all your rounds, and, you know, this was, like, the 
last race and you, you cross the line, what were you thinking? First of all, I was like, I know damn well, like, he ain't faster than the last ten years. <laughs> so, damn, he did. So then I was like, okay, but I was like, I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I might have got Christian. I don't know. So when we crossed the line, we hit the pad. I'm looking up, like, it's taking so long. It felt like an eternity to show the results. And we just looking around, like, we all looking at each other, like, was it me? Was it you? Was it you? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I know. I'm like, I know for sure I probably got second, though. Like, I'm like, I was I was there. And so when it comes down, I see that, you know, Jacobs gets the win. But then I see my time, and I see 644, and I was like, it made me feel a little bit better. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? Like, it just let me know that all the hard work and everything that we put in, you know, coming into this indoor season has been working. Because it's one thing to feel how you feel in, in, in practice. Because you got some people, man, I've seen practice really hard. And then getting the meet, and it's like, it's a disconnect. So it was nice to see all the work from practice and everything that, you know, and all the stars aligning to at least go and come away with a medal and a PB. So, I mean, once once it crossed the, I was thinking that, like, um, I thought I won for a second. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, a quick second, though. I was like, ah, nah, I get it. And yeah. then I the replay, and I was like, ah. I think we all thought that. I was like, wow, that was just like, where did he come from in those last – yeah, you know, like you said, ten meters, five meters, like it was ten meters. Yeah. That says it all right there, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> that, that says it all right there. It's bullshit. At, at least hey, at least you can smile about it and talk about it, right? That's just like cause see, like, you know, for us, like when you when you when you pull it off like you you pull one of those off man like that's where all the you know that's where all the glory and like everything goes and it's like as a sprinter like it's 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 really a it's really an ego driven event you know especially in like the hundred or the sixty and stuff like that because it's the fastest you know what I'm saying like at the end of the day like I'm not saying that you know the heifer's not about the best but it's like you can have a good day in something and you right. know it's that but for us we only have this sprint this is all I got you know so. That way till next time. That is rough, man. That is <laughs> that's the one thing. As much as we go, Kendall, you're crazy with all the events you do. You do have a lot of events. So you are exactly. right. You're like, well, I can get them back in the hurdles or right. I still got that exactly. long jump. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like imagine knowing that, like, okay, like, all right, I just gotta let this dude not beat me by five seconds. That's different. You go to a race. <laughs> And you might beat him, you know? You might beat him because you're so relaxed. Like, I know I ain't going to lose by five seconds. Mm-hmm. I hate Vernon. Vernon, go away. <laughs> Vernon. Um, hey, Vernon. No, I, no, I, I, I think we got to bring Vernon in. <laughs> oh, Vernon. my God. This <laughs> dude, man. They're not ready to do it in here. Please don't do it. He's a troll, man. Marvin, you know I have to bring him in. If Vernon shows up in here, we're just, we're just going to bring Marvin in. Marvin, we'll bring Vernon in for just a minute. Uh. That but that that was a good question though, Kendall. I mean, oh man, there he is. There he Vernon. is. Kendall, the last time that we were together in Eugene. Hey Marvin. <laughs> Marvin. He did the same I thing. Marvin Gracie Williams Jr. I know that's you, boy. I see you. I'm looking at you. I'm sorry, Bob. Bob, I'm going to sleep for a couple minutes. I got to go back to a phone call. What's up, Bob? Hey, Kendall. What's up, Vernon? Hey, Marvin. What's up, man? Congratulations. <laughs> what place you had got? <laughs> oh, my God. I can't remember. I know you want some. I saw everybody tweeting about it. What, 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 what it was? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm yeah, gone, man. You. All right, man. Hey, how how I leave? I don't know how to work this, Bob. I'll just bounce you out. Okay, I knew he was going to come with the bull. I knew uh, he was going to do it. I knew he was going to do it. I knew he was a troll, man. Uh, we love Vernon, though. He he had some funny stories in Eugene for us, though, right, Kendall, when we, when we shot last spring? Yeah, he was so funny. That was a funny whole experience. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, you know, I don't know how we're going to top that, Marvin. So, Kendall, I'm speechless. Kendall, we'll, we're going to let you go. We appreciate you coming on. 
And I think, Thanks for um, having me. yeah, I mean, this is like really fun. Marvin, did you have a good time as well? I had a great time. So actually, Kendall, uh, when they had me on the show, they uh, had me end it by telling, you know, all the guests where, you know, they can find you, social media, you know, whatever. Okay, yeah. Um, Instagram is probably the best place at kdub, so K-D-U-B-B underscore 100. Um, I have a Twitter, never use it, so Instagram is probably the best bet. <laughs> you missing yeah, yeah. out, man. Twitter is where all the jokes at. Well, I look, I don't tweet myself, but I'll like. I got you. Yeah, I'll go for the you laughs. Yeah, okay. I'll go for the laughs. Good, good. Good. It is true. Well, thanks. Well, thanks, Kendall. Appreciate it. We'll have you back Thank out. Thank you, Kendall. Soon. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Good luck this season. Thank you. You too. Marvin, I, I got to say, first of all, that was a smooth exit there. I, I kind of liked how you did that. You just like yeah, no, they, uh, yeah, I got that. From, I picked that up from Devin. I picked that up from Devin. He got me like that last time. I think you're dead on though. Twitter is where all the jokes are. Yeah, for man, listen, that's why I get on my that's why I get on my news. Like I get on my news on Twitter. Like if I don't see yeah. it on Twitter, it ain't true. Especially about sports. Like maybe talking about Tom Brady this or somebody sign. I go to Twitter first. Well, then the thing that's hilarious and maddening at the same time is it's hard to follow the 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 string of it all. Like it's like a it's like wait a minute, what did they say? Like, yeah, I feel yeah. like I'm always one step behind. In the whole you kind of got to go like okay, so like when it comes to like when it comes to like football, if somebody got traded or if I see a trade rumor or something, I'm going to look for Adam Schefter or Ian Rappaport. If they didn't report it, then I. Jury's still out on that one. Right. Right. So you gotta have your go to guys and then you're gonna Yeah, you gotta know exactly yeah. what exactly yeah. what you're looking for and who you're looking for because you can look up like let's just say you wake up tomorrow and Tom Brady's trending. Yeah. You don't really know why, but then as you start to look up, you'll see, okay, well Tom Brady announced that he's coming back. All right, then you go to this page and if it's if it's on his page, he probably not Well yeah. now that we're there for a moment, we just uh, and I'll let you go soon here, but the when Tom Brady said, I'm coming back out of retirement, but that guy that bought that, that last touchdown pass football or whatever, <laughs> was that insured? I, I never followed up on that. Like, I he, mean, if you spend that kind of money, I'm pretty sure they give you some kind of like. They have to, and right? You, you may not get all 500 back, but you got some kind of like, you know, in case Brady. They probably put some caveats or something. They had to. There's no they way you bought it outright. It can't just be. It's like, oh, you got a fifty dollars football. Oh, sales of final. Yeah, like nah. <laughs> I'd be pissed. I'd be. I'd be so mad. Man. <laughs> I'd be so mad. So because uh, it's like even if you do, even if you keep it, and like he plays another season, he retires. It's not the last football. So it's like no. The he last threw like season. thirty-five more touchdowns in that time, right? <laughs> The Marvin, so I'm I'm from Michigan originally, and being a Detroit Lions fan back in the day, I'm not really anymore because it's so bad. How can one franchise be so bad for so long? Um, well, I mean, I'm I'm a, I'm actually a really big, I'm a really huge football fan, and like I'm like into like, you know, like stuff like that. And I would say that like it, it starts with it starts with like the coach or the athletes, because you can bring in like any coach. You right. know, to kind of, but the athletes have to want to, you have to have athletes in place, you know, you got to have talent in place. And then the athletes all have to come like collectively on like one accord. Right. If you get that type of continuity on the football team or a team period in, in any type of team, football, basketball, whatever it is in general, if you get everybody like clicking on the same cylinders, then you said that's a recipe for success. I mean, but when Matthew so many people, Stafford, are, right? He leaves, and the first year he leaves, he wins the Super Bowl. Yeah, you just put them around. You put them around talented athletes that all are on one accord, you know, with yeah. the coach. When everything is flowing, like, it, you know, it's good, but when it's a little bit of turmoil, whether it's uncertainty in jobs, whether it's, um, you know, upper management, whatever the situation may be, there's some type of leak in that they, they gain fixing. And so, I mean, that's just what happens. The team just don't win. And then when you get so used to losing, you know, you don't know how to win. So yeah, the um, so I'm just bouncing around for a few different topics before we before we end the night. But, so we were had we had a big shoot today. The last few days here in New York, we were at Icon Stadium. Have you ever been there in in, in New York? Yeah, City? it's a Randall, it's a Randall's Island. Yeah, it's like it's like the far side of the moon out there. The wind, the cold. So, so t- we were shooting with some Toya Ghoul. So on, yeah. 
Yesterday it was 35 degrees, and like the headwinds were like 25 miles an hour. So today it was like 25 with like 30 to 35 with gusts of maybe 40 miles an hour. And we were out there shooting, and she's running. I ran my first, I ran the, the high school dream 100 there in 2011. All right. I think it was like cold and rainy. Yeah, we ran into like a negative like 2.5 or something like that. That's all I kept thinking is Marvin kept talking about the negative. I wonder what this negative is. Is it 3, 5, 4, 5? What is this thing? Yeah, no, listen, when you feel it, man, you just be knowing. Like that ain't, that ain't what you're going to run into. Yeah, I but think no, I got I, like sunburn from the wind. <laughs> Maybe it's called windburn. I don't know. Man, something. But no, I saw so yeah, I've been there, I've been there, I've been there a total of, I think three times now. Yeah. Uh, cause we had, um, I went one time as a pro in 2014 and ran 100, but I don't think we ran very fast. Yeah, that's where Bolt set a world record there. I think I had redid the track by the time I got to it cause he set that record in like 08. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, the track looks good. I mean, they have plaques in there. We actually took some photos in there, like, with um jesse owens and run there and yeah this this like a lot of history on that track on the dark side of the moon randall's island yeah they got like buried in like nowhere yeah <laughs> it's crazy it's i think crazy. I'm, i think I, I think i gotta meet there this i think i gotta meet there this year i don't know for sure though really i might i think it's like one like june 5th june 12th that i might All right, better be going to i don't know for sure yet i gotta start looking that up well we're gonna be shooting with you if you are so that, that's for yeah, sure definitely I definitely I'll keep you updated. The uh, so what's going on with the rest of your season, Marvin? Let's let's kind of wrap it up here and and uh, give me the lowdown on that and let the fans know kind of kind of what you're up to. Uh, well, this upcoming weekend is um is Florida relays, and then we're kind of we're kind of going from there because there's a meet coming up in Bermuda that we might end up at. Um, there's um. There's a Puerto Rico, a, a re meet in Puerto Rico, I believe, right. yeah. uh, the following month. Um, so we're just trying to map out a plan to just, you know, make sure we train because we had we didn't do a lot of training coming, uh, going dealing indoors, and so we're just trying to you know train and get some quality work in before we really, you know, unleash. Awesome. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to see you in person again and uh, do some new filming with you and just watch your race. Honestly. Yes, sir. Looking forward to a good season, man. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, buddy. So tell everybody where uh, where they can find you and and uh, on social media and everything. Okay, yeah, everybody, um, you can follow me at brace yourself, B R A C E Y A S E L F. That's uh, Twitter. That's uh, Instagram. I think my Facebook is Marvin Bracy. Um, so yeah, that's where you can find me at. Awesome. The uh, so for world's greatest, you can find us on YouTube at just world's greatest. Right, so that's awesome. And then uh, on Twitter, we actually are world's greatest. Somebody is sitting on world's greatest on Twitter. It's like a dead account, one of those things. So we did world's greatest without any vowels. So that's how you can find us there. And then we're world's greatest team on Instagram. So, but uh, this is a great show, man. I had fun. How about you? I definitely had a lot of fun. Definitely. All right, so we gotta we gotta get this rolling again. Okay, Thanks, okay. Marvin. All right, my friend. Have a great night. Yes, sir. All right, bye.